Okay, so this is take two. I've just done a, about three minutes recording and Timmy started barking at a guy walking past and the guy wouldn't walk past. So these are the perils of recording outdoors. It does look like it's about to rain. It is drizzling a little bit. Every now and then the wind uh, blows my tripod over and the laptop is sitting precariously on my car on it but this what a beautiful setting isn't it um, this is the wild coast and behind me is um, sort of in that sort of area there is Cobbin and uh, yeah I actually walked there a couple of days ago it's about six kilometers that way so um, in this episode we're gonna talk a little bit about the legal narrative in terms of the uh, Lori Vallow case, the Doomsday Mom case. It's quite a, it's been quite a long time coming, but we are at quite a important milestone um, where the arraignment will be today. Uh, today is the 19th of April. It will be at one o'clock uh, today. The arraignment of the uh, so-called Doomsday Mom um, and basically the Doomsday Couple, I guess, Chad, Daybell, and Lori Vallow. Um, just FYI, an arraignment hearing is really where the charges are read out to the accused and from that point onwards the accused is referred to as the defendant. And what is sort of established then is that, uh, is competency. Are you aware of these charges? Do you understand what they mean? Um, do you have legal representation? Are you sort of, you know, have you approved this person to represent you and you know so can the trial kind of go forward and there are a couple of other things as well we'll get to that in a moment um, and so this is why Laurie had to be competent in order for the uh, whole legal uh, machinery to, to, to go forward to continue to go forward and um, And so that's really where we are now. And it will be interesting if Laurie's asked, do you understand the charges? And she actually says no. I don't think that'll happen, but who knows what'll happen. This is quite a strange case. So um, if justice has been denied or delayed or just a long time coming in the Morphew case, um, in the Morphew case, which has sort of been two years um, in, in a kind of a legal limbo, the Doomsday Mom case predates the Morphe case by about seven months. Um, that's more than half a year. So we've been waiting even longer for something to happen, for accountability in the um, in the in the disappearance of um, Tylee Ryan and JJ Vallow, Laurie's kids, and then other people as well. So it was actually in September 2019 that Laurie's kids disappeared. That that is what started everything. Uh, started that sort of ball rolling and it was around about November, December that the media sort of caught hold of the story, that the fact that the kids were still missing and the parents were, were honeymooning in in Hawaii, it was certainly Laurie was, and uh, you know, the questions were coming up then already, uh, where are your children, you know and it was sort of like no comment and uh, this September that disappearance will be three years ago, right? Long time. That is a long time for a double, triple, or potentially quadruple murder case to be heard um, with the uh, body count of three or more potentially shared between two individuals. And um, one of them um, being the recently married uh, defendant, Laurie. Um, but basically, Laurie and Chad have, have, have to answer to quite a, quite a number of charges. The charges include first-degree murder, conspiracy to commit first-degree murder, grand theft by deception, uh, grand theft uh, on its own, insurance fraud, um, and uh, th that's insurance fraud related to the deaths of Laurie's children. I think she was collecting... Um, some sort of uh, payments um, in terms of the, um, I'm not sure, social security type payments. Um, I'm not 100% certain whether the conspiracy to commit murder 
uh, refers to Charles Vallow. Um, he was actually killed by Laurie's brother Alex Cox, uh, who is also deceased. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if it does include that. And if if so, if it does include that, um, who pulled Alex's strings? Who pulled Laurie's brother's strings in this particular case? Was it his charming manipulative sister, um, or uh, the narrator slash grave digger, Chad? If narrators make narratives, are they also more inclined towards controlling them? It's quite an interesting question in terms of this case. Or are ex-beauty queens better fishers and manipulators of men? JJ's grandfather has also recently speculated I think in the media that that Laurie was never incompetent that that according to him she knows how to play the system um, so the question is is she the puppet master in the story or is Chad who, who's really the person that uh, has masterminded this whole crazy all, all the all the crazy events related to this case So, um, if one of these two, if, if, if it's either Chad manipulating Laurie or Laurie manipulating Chad being more manipulative than the other one, uh, are we going to see um, one of them, we, are we going to see the master manipulator throwing the other one under the bus? So, you know, is there going to be a change at some point in that, in terms of that? It does seem as though Chad is the better legal representation and also um, because he seems to have more money uh, than Laurie. So he has more resources to fight this legal battle. So today at 1 p.m. the rusty wheels of justice grind irrevocably forward once more uh, and the discussion will be whether to move the venue or whether to bring the jury to the venue while well, it's actually starting to drip with rain I need to wrap up um, the arraignment won't be live streamed but there will be a video camera in the court and so it will be recorded and then that recording will be broadcast later um, so this is really the beginning of Laurie and Chad finally answering to questions that have hovered over them uh, like a giant black cloud. Not grey like this, but black. Um, a big black cloud ever since the mysterious vanishing of Tylee and JJ in September 2019. So until now, um, they seem to have been able to dodge or avoid questions and a potential accountability, well that is about to change. So now at last, certainly in a, in a legal sense, the rubber is about to hit the road. And ironically where I'm standing is right beside a sort of grass landing strip where rubber uh, hits the grass. Um, the landing strip is sort of over there. But anyway, that is it from me, uh, so I hope you guys are going to be paying attention to the case and um, we'll see where it goes from here. Uh, thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.